All right, welcome back. So let's get to the cab. I have a piece of brass here that I've cut out uh, the exact size that I need for the top of the cab and then I've taken the rollover protection and I've ground off the detail that was on the side as well as the detail that is on the top. And um, this piece of brass is gonna fit and I will take and bend the sides over. Actually, I'm gonna do that first. So you see I've got some marks on here. If I get the light right and I'm blind, you guys. You can see the two uh, angles right here. Those parts are gonna get cut off. And then these lines right here, I'm gonna use and bend it in the vise. So I'm just gonna mount it in, bend it over, take 90 degrees. And then hopefully that'll fit down right on top of here and it will get uh, installed. All right, so I got the metal all cut up here and mounted in my vise. You bend it in the same direction. Just take that up a bit. Let's do something else here. So I could get more even pressure on it. I'm just going to take this cut off of 2x4, put it up against the back here, and then use that to help apply my pressure. This is some thicker brass. I do have a bending brake too, but. I quite like using this thing. Got a pretty round bend out of that. Let's give it a little bit. Get a little bit of love here. Hammer that down a little flatter. Mm. By bending break, I mean that little tool that I've used a few times that gets questionable results. All right, uh, hopefully that worked out. Let's see here. If you're bending thicker brass, sometimes you get results you don't want. Sometimes you get results you do. I do need to definitely get a better break though. That little one is nice, but again, when I get into thicker metal like this, it doesn't do quite the job that I like and I've actually had it kind of cut the metal so we're going to use this for this try not the the flattest result let's go ahead and knock that down a little bit more next tools that I'm saving up for are definitely going to be that uh, little table saw and then uh, something to shear and bend brass probably just just something to bend it all right cool and once I get this all squared away I'm going to take and probably sand the top out too of using this to mash it and even it out a bit there's a little little bit of a roll to the edge but it's not too bad and I got this corner didn't quite fold all the way I'll address that later no, this one's bending much better I think on the last one, maybe I was just pressing, pressing my the metal too far on the outside. All right. Still, I'm gonna hammer it down a bit because it is a little rounder. It came out much better than the first one. Remount it. 
Tighten it down, and then hit it a few more times just to get it so it's the same profile. Oh, much better. Cool. Nice, dude. Start cutting myself. So I need to do a little bit of adjusting as you can see that this is didn't bend it far enough out, but it's an easy enough fix. Putting on the other side now, this is actually turning out uh, to be a good good tactic. It's taking all the, um, the really rounded roll out of the edge and it is making it a much more sharp 90 degree angle. Been working on this for a few minutes. And as you can see, it's turning out quite well. Just takes a little patience. Not the prettiest result in the world, but I'll just hit this with the file, smooth it out a little bit. Um, I have been unable to get a photo of the top of these caps. I don't know if there's any detail up there, but I can only imagine it's probably just a flat sheet of steel. But this guy is fitting better now. I think I'll have to take a little bit more um, material off the side of the rollover protection. Wait a second, you're Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. All right. Looking good, ya. Yeah? Just uh, this part needs to be cut to match the inside right there. But it's a coming along. I'm going to deal with that too, those little corners. But the uh, method of putting it in here and then hitting it with the little brass hammer, it became hammer time and uh, it's come out pretty good. I'm going to smooth the top of this out, but I'm happy. I think what I'll do is probably just do a mark on the outside just to keep it flush instead of trying to match to that and then just mark on the back here i think i think that will work the same thing to the other side <laughs> then i'll just go ahead and grind those off and we'll be that much closer to success man Alrighty, righty, righty. Looking pretty swell. Kind of looks like a hat. Out here. That looks pretty cool. Is that upside down to you guys? No, because if it's in the viewfinder upside down to me, then it's right side up to you. I'm sorry, guys. The videotaping on this episode has been horse. Sh hey, the meow's back there. Yeah, cool. Right on. I'm stoked. That was the easiest, easiest cab that I ever. No, I said cab, not cat. Easiest cab I've ever had to do. So it looks pretty sweet, and uh, yeah, man. Let's get moving on to the next thing, making the interior. All right, so when I first started this project, uh, before we decided to go with an open cab or a cab that has opening doors on it, I thought it would be okay to just use the interior that I found in the D8R because I thought it was relatively well, uh, well detailed interior for a injection molding but as far as something in an open cab i think it's pretty lame i mean yeah i could drop that in there and and make it work but there's really not a lot of detail here i have two joysticks that look like upside down ice cream cones and then our um, control panel is relatively detailed and then it has the two pedals down here that might even, I think they might even be trying to do three pedals there. I'm not sure exactly what's going on at the top there. And then this is actually the seat out of the D8R uh, that I stuck in there, which I, which I will be using this seat because getting these sort of contours and stuff like that is very time consuming. And um, I'm just going to use the seat as is. Might detail it up a little bit. 
But the rest of the interior, I don't think I'm going to use at all. I might use it as a foundation to build upon, but uh, otherwise I'm not going to touch it. And the reason why is this stuff is is difficult to work with. It's kind of got the consistency of chewing gum before you chew on it. And it though it does cut well, it doesn't sand for beans and it doesn't hold paint very well either. So I think I'm just going to completely ditch this. I figured out what part I'm going to keep and what part I'm not going to keep. So let's get a better light here. We're going to take and cut away the whole front of this. I'm not using any of that. And then I'm going to cut away the whole outside here. And all this outside, I'm not using any of that. All I'm going to keep is the uh, base where the seat attaches and this for like retention purposes. And then I'm going to keep the armrest as well. So I'll cut around those. But those are actually going to get shortened back to two, probably to right about there. So I'm just going to use the uh, exacto blade and just start removing the stuff that I don't need. All right, so this is all I saved from, from this. Basically the seat base and the armrest. And then the seat from the D11. We'll sit down in there. I'll, I'll figure out a better way to glue it in. For, for this kind of crap, I'm not gonna use super glue or anything like that. I'm probably gonna use more like a rubberized glue, something like a shoe glue, or I think I have like, this other stuff's called PC1000. Ah, here we go, E6000, if this is even still good. Right, things are moving along nicely here. Uh, I totally forgot, so I was I was drawing everything out on the base here to get ready to start building my pieces, and I forgot that with my other one, I had created this uh, brass floor pan, and I had a uh, second one, because I made them in advance, because I thought I was going to do the enclosed cab for this. So I decided to utilize the floor pan to just build all my stuff on. And um, I'm getting started on building this uh, console on the side here. So I just I drew it out in here first, but then I drew it out in the brass. Let me keep that in the camera. And then this is, again, what's left of my seat. It kind of looks like a little lounge chair. A club seat but yeah things are starting to fit together well this just comes in at the almost the same height as this lower lower section right here and then I'm gonna make a probably a little eye shaped beam that's gonna sit on the inside here roll it over on the top so it's basically like that inside, and then I'll attach another piece to the top. Uh, I might make that out of styrene, might make it out of metal, I'm not sure yet. Just kind of puts it along. I find that um, I like to use brass a lot for any surface that I'm going to make a curve on, because it's easier to curve the metal. And all I did for bending this brass was I uh, rigged it up inside my vise, and then I laid this piece of aluminum on top of the vise so this part was clamped in and laid the aluminum on top and then just rolled this over till I got the shape that I wanted and then trimmed off the excess soldered it in place. I also got some new solder um, I think it's a little bit sturdier than the little one mil, uh, little teeny coil that I was using I got this stuff it's um there's no core in it it's a solid I think it's uh, two percent silver and then the rest is um, lead and zinc. Alright, so some updates here. Working on the second one. Uh, I'm going to be going with glue instead of solder on this. Uh, the cab is enclosed, so I'm not going to be too worried about the structural stability there. Um, this one, again, I just uh, bent another piece of metal. For this, all I did was I just laid this uh, strip of metal over the outside of the, the one that I already did and just uh, held it in place with the pliers and then bent it into shape and then kind of tweaked it till I got the same same shape out of it and then I made a little uh, U-shaped piece of brass and soldered it to the back and then it will get glued in place inside there and then I'll make a cap for that as well. 
All right, so moving along here, I've added a few more of these little lips just to aid in supporting the material that I put up here. And I've decided to use uh, polystyrene because I'm going to do try to do a lot of detailing to the top of this, and the poly will just make it a little bit easier to do. Alright, so progressing along here, uh, this might be too small of a detail for my lovely camera to get. Let's see if it will show up. So I have the top piece glued on here. And I went around the edge, sanded it so it's a pretty smooth bond. And now I'm working on the details for the bases of the levers. Uh, this does or does not have boots like uh, some of the newer vehicles or machines do. It's just got like a little uh, shift pattern and then the lever moves around inside that. So again, looking at the little monitor, I can't tell if this is gonna show up or not, but this is a little uh, three millimeter disc I've cut in to, uh, it's almost like a half moon. And then this is a, a little square piece that I rounded the edges off on uh, to kind of replicate where the dozer control and then the ripper control will be coming out of. Uh, the glue that I used is a really lightweight glue. It's from uh, Tamiya. It smells like nail polish remover. It probably is just an extremely lightweight um, acetone maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's got uh, contains acetone, butyl acetate, and other organic solvents. So it basically just acts as a uh, lighter version of something like Plastruck. And it doesn't flow or uh, manipulate the plastic as much as this stuff. This stuff's great, but when you use it on thinner plastics, it has a tendency to make the entire sheet really soft. So if you're working with really thin, like half millimeter stuff like this, um, this is a little bit too aggressive. This is a little bit more for thicker pieces and then plastic bottles, but it is great. I do like this stuff and it comes with uh, this little pin head straw on it or spout. But this stuff's cool because it has a little um, attached brush which makes application really easily, really easy. And because it's not a glue, it doesn't get all gunked up. It's just a solvent. All right, so we got the first stage of uh, the interior done. The side panel where the hydraulic controls go. Um, the, again, the only reason I'm not filming this is because it's such small work that literally my fingers would block so much of it that you guys wouldn't see. So unfortunately for this part, I just have to give you guys updates. But um, this is where uh, I will install the lever for the blade control and then the ripper control. And then this is just a little um, panel block off, this little dot right there. Because uh, it's, this is one for the open cab and this is where the... Um, one of the AC vents would normally be. And then there's this little panel on the side here. Uh, the little red dots that you see are spots that I'm gonna install little pieces of wire to look like uh, bolt studs. I just haven't drilled any of that stuff out yet. So that fits in right there. And then the seat would obviously go in the middle. And now I need to start working on creating the panel that's gonna go on the side here. So using our handy tandy, handy dandy, handy tandy, tandy dandy, handy dandy bending tool, 
of mid bends. Whoop, whoops, give you some background there. Bump. And uh, this is going to be, it is the start of the panel that will sit right here and hold the two steering clutches. So first I'm gonna cut off what I don't need. Give a little bit more, then I can grind it down. If you're trying to, if you're a budget builder and you want really, 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 really cheap tools, these are from Daiso. Um, it's a basically it's like the 99 cent store from japan these were a buck 50. the edge on the blade it was not super straight and i had to regrind it on my belt sander but i mean not bad for for a buck 50. no you're not getting like perfect cuts here and remember anything that has a, a bladed edge like that is going to give you an angled cutoff line on both sides if you want straight lines you need to use stuff more like this it has a flat edge on one side and then angled cuts on the other so when you cut this way it leaves a flat edge but this is a little too heavy duty for these i try to keep these for wires and smaller pieces of metal okay now that we've cut that off i'm just going to take this over to the belt sander and i'm going to cut the initial angle in and then I will fit it in place making incremental adjustments as I go. So I never, um, if I do draw the line to be exactly where I need it, I never do my first grind out right away. I do close to it, test fit to make sure that I've, I've got it where I want it, and then I go back in and I finish it off. Got the initial shape done here, kind of goofed, I wasn't paying attention, and I got this little angle cut into the side it's not a big deal i'll create a, um, a light fascia that's going to go over this anyways i just wish i didn't do that and it fits in here like this i'm going to uh, take that squared back that's angle there and make it so it matches this but if i could get this in the right place but it fits in pretty well i'll solder it in once I create that side panel, actually, I think um, I might glue it in. The side panel I'm gonna make roll under, so I have a spot to glue it down, because if I try to solder it, then I'm gonna screw up what's already done on the other side. So I need to step up my soldering game and probably get a resistance soldering unit, but that's kind of low on my list of tools to get right now. I want to get a micro arbor saw so that I can cut my own stock and not have to buy it. And that I can do more of stuff like this, these angled cuts on the arbor saw instead of having to depend on uh, my sander, which doesn't do the straightest lines. So they're just kind of lightly mocked up. Uh, yeah, it's coming along. I'm enjoying it. And I'm also enjoying throwing things across my desk. Yeah. Right, so now it's time to create the side panel here. This is uh, not actually the current one. It's just a previous base plate that I kind of goofed up. Uh, so it's scrap metal now. And we're gonna use it from a side panel. I'm gonna lay the piece on here and I'm gonna trace out the inside. And then that's what we're gonna cut. Stay so.
And I'm going to create a part that folds under so that I can glue all this in place. The side panel is going to get soldered on uh, to this top panel and then it will get glued to the base plate. And again, the reason I'm not soldering it to the base plate is because we already have stuff already soldered to the base plate. I don't want to screw that up and on top of the stuff that soldered to the base plate, things have been glued. I don't want to break the glue bonds and I don't want to melt the stuff that's been glued. So somebody forgot to take footage off his memory card and filled up his memory card to the point where the camera decided to stop recording because it had nowhere to put my recordings and missed a whole bunch of me soldering things. I have since uh, purchased a solderite pad and I cannot believe that it took me that long to figure out that I needed something like that for getting good flat soldering done. Now, um, this console for the N series is what holds the two steering clutches, which will go right here. And then it has the transmission shifter, the little U-shape uh, power shift. And then it has a, I think it's the um, hydraulic cutoff handle, the little one that you have to pull up drops down there. And on the enclosed cab, there's uh, actually two vents that sit right there. And then there's various screws and studs. Um, you can see on this other side, and I may have explained this already, but these little red dots right here are places that I'm gonna put in simulated bolts. Basically, I'm gonna drill holes in there and then take uh, that very small 0.5 diameter brass wire I have and then just drop them in to look like uh, bolt heads. And then this right here basically simulates a little plate covering where the AC vent would have come out of uh, this console. And then here is our um, spot for the dozer controls. It doesn't, on this model, there's no boot. It's just a, it's a shift plate, kind of like you'd see in like a Ferrari or something. And then this one is going to be for the ripper. So, because um, I don't have the proper milling bits I'm not going to put the slots directly in this and it would be kind of void of detail because the full size version has a trim plate that sits over. So what I'm going to do is take my extremely thin, um, this stuff is almost as thin as paper, it's like construction paper, but it's polystyrene. And I'm going to cut out a little piece of it, place it on this block and then uh, attempt to use one of my little drill bits to cut out the the notches and stuff uh, for the the two stirring clutches and then the um, power shift shifter as well. So we'll see if that works out. This stuff is super thin. You don't need to use a, an exacto blade or anything. Just a sharp pair of scissors. Not perfect, but considering the scale and resources, not bad either. Uh, I'm going to cut a little, just tiny strips of sandpaper and get in there and just try to clean it up a bit. Um, 
And the drill bit actually survived all the way through. Uh, it went nice and steady, you know, treated each spot as its own little project. And then at the very, very end, got a little cocky and snapped a bit. But again, I'm using a drill bit for something it's not supposed to be doing. I'm pulling against it, which you're not supposed to do. If you've seen routing or um, milling bits, they're always a lot, lot shorter and very stout. Um, but again, you gotta work with what you got. Just got our teeny little bit of sandpaper here. I'm just gonna go in and start cleaning up the edges here. Got some raw, rough spots. All right, so we've got some more things done. I have finished this side of the console. Um, just some little details on there that will make sense later once they get assembled, but uh, the two slots for the steering clutches, as well as the little U-shape for the uh, power shift transmission fits in nicely. And I've also made a some uh, levers here. Let me find a small tool. Oh, these are small, so small. So these, I've made uh, two of these, which will go into the uh, dozer blade and ripper section. Uh, they'll get bent into shape later. Let me give you a better background. This was made out of 0.5 millimeter, well, yeah, 0.5 millimeter brass rod. And I've utilized these little units, which are, um, they're like these little gel beads that you can get at nail supply places, because as you can tell, I'm a, a kind of guy who does his nails. And these are, I think, uh, 0.8 millimeter in size. So what I do is I just take the brass wire and I cut off an end of it and it actually makes like a chisel point, a really sharp chisel point, and then make a little dimple in a piece of wood and then drop one of the beads into there. And with this, I just simply stick it into the bead and then it makes a pretty scale sized little lever. Uh, the next lever is for the power shift. Uh, this is just the 0.5 wire stuck into a piece of one millimeter brass tubing, so quite small. And then uh, this is the hydraulic cutoff switch or whatever that lever is that sticks into the bottom of this control panel. And then last but not least, the steering clutches. Uh, I've, let me get the other ones because those ones are taped together. I made these out of the um, 0.5 millimeter brass wire as well and I flattened it out and then kind of bent it into shape. It's really hard to see in this camera. I bet it's probably blurry on your guys end, but you can see that is it. Um, I think they're a little, little too big, but I will be shrinking them down just a tad. And then last but not least, so I was originally I was going to use the, um, the D8 console control uh, panel. I didn't like it though because it's not the same shape as the one that's in the D8 through the D11 uh, of the N variant. Actually, I think the D8N might have the R style console, but in the 10 and the 11, it has a more basic style one. So I made two of them out of brass, but kind of unfinished right now because they are. But it's a pretty simple design. I just took a piece of styrene and made um, a jig and then kind of copied that. So it's a piece of brass here in the back with a piece in the front that's bent like a like a lightning bolt and soldered to it and then I put this shell around the outside to kind of act as a cowl 
Um, details that will be added to this are as follows. We're going to continue this with a little piece, probably styrene just going across the bottom to continue the um, cowl. And then various pieces will go in to create the back panels and then the gauges themselves and the lights I will create on the decal. The um, brake pedal and the decelerator pedal will be installed as well. I'm going to make those out of uh, one millimeter brass tubing. I'm going to take and flatten it out and then attach it to a little piece of the strip to create a pedal. The reason I'm doing it with the brass tubing and not two pieces of the flat brass itself are it's going to be easier to install it if I can just simply drill a one millimeter hole in the bottom of this and install the pedal into that and then I have to create the throttle lever that comes out as well. All right, shaky camera work, ahoy. I have finished as much of the interior as I'm going to do for this episode. Um, as you can see here, we have pedals and center console and footrests. Uh, nothing is actually affixed. It's just sitting here. Oh, and I put the throttle on too. Um, I'll give you guys a better look here. Yeah, the, gotta glue everything in, but are done. So the process that I'm going to use for painting this, I can't install all this stuff in yet just because it's going to be different colors and whatnot and I got to glue it in and I still have to have this so I can take it apart to continue building the other parts but all of uh, the building of all the interior components are, is done and I'm glad I didn't use the uh, D8 interior. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that side by side. Uh, my camera zooms uh, extra far. Focus. Well, if you could see it, there's just like little pedal details in here that are kind of weak sauce. Let's see if we get some better light on there. But yeah, it's done. We done.